Hey guys, welcome back to another impressions video. This time to talk about Beacon Pines. I played this on the Xbox Series S, but uh, the, the game is also available for other systems. Um, I believe the Nintendo Switch as well. And um, I played this via the Game Pass service on my Xbox Series S. Uh, via the recommendation of a friend here in the in our in the community, uh, JC, aka Auslook007, who uh, played the game and had some uh, pretty positive thoughts, and uh, I decided to try the game because you know why not? It's on Game Pass, and the game is actually uh, uh, very interesting, and I'm glad I, I gave it a shot. Uh, it's also not incredibly long. I believe it took me around seven hours to. Uh, to beat the game and get the uh, true ending as well as getting all the achievements which is not uh, that hard to do uh, quite honestly if you're going for the uh, uh, for the true ending so yeah this game was released in September of 2022 and I was trying to do some Halloween theme games horror games if you will for the month of October um, uh, I beat this during the month of October and I want to say it qualifies as a Halloween game because the looks can be deceiving on this game even though it has a cutesy type of presentation with uh, anthropomorphic, um, you know, animals. Uh, the game can be uh, both cozy um, in in certain aspects and parts of the story, but at the same time can send you uh, chills uh, with some of uh, darker themes that lurk around the game. So that's one of my favorite things about this game: how it, it can be very uh, light-hearted, if you will. But at the same time, a little bit eerie, a little bit, um, you know, give you the chills and certain aspects of the story and the presentation and also the some some dark themes that are part of the game uh, itself. So with that being said, the, the story revolves around the town of Beacon Pines and you uh, play the role of a 12 uh, year old deer called uh, Luca. And uh, that's going, it's going through a lot in his personal life with the death of his father and the uh, recent disappearance of his, of his mother. So uh, you're kind of in this very, I guess, uh, um, you know, sad mood uh, with the, you know, the disappearance of your mom and uh, you're, you're dealing with a lot of things uh, with your friends as well in, in, in the town. So uh, part of the, uh, of the goal of the game is to figure out the mystery of the disappearance of your mother. Uh, part of it is grieving your 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 dad's you know death, and part of it it's also figuring out what's going on with this new uh, I guess company that moved into town um, called called uh, per perennial harvest company I believe, uh, which are up to some shady business and practices that are uh, for you to find out you know exactly what's going on. Uh, of course, I'm not going to spoil the the game, uh, especially this one, since it's a very focused narrative game. Uh, this is almost a visual novel, if you will, because the game has very little gameplay elements. Uh, the the game really revolves around reading a ton of text, um, you know, making decisions, and um, you know, the, the gameplay features uh, themselves are very limited. Uh, but we, before we talk about about the gameplay, let me just say that the story is very interesting. The way the game is set up, it's almost like a choose your own adventure type of uh, situation where you uh, there are branching paths within the story, and as you collect these things called charms, which are kind of like uh, cards that have different uh, actions uh, you can uh, change the um, I guess outcome of your of your um, uh, decisions in the game for example some of the charms are uh, ponder um, or um, you know fight or you know hide or run things like that so when you get to a branching point in the game you have this, uh, the, the option to choose a different charm and depending on the charm that you choose something is going to happen. You may get a bad ending. The game might end right there and there. Uh, but, you know, uh, you know, don't don't worry if this happens. You know, the game allows you to replay immediately, uh, select a different charm uh, to see what happens in that situation. And that's how you kind of like make your way through the game. And then eventually you can uh, unlock the true ending uh, by, you know, doing all the combinations of, uh, you know, different charms uh, as you unlock them. Because, you know, that's another... A part of the game is that you you, you you start with zero charms so you have to either un unlock them through the story progression or through just finding them by doing um, uh, you know by investigating the town itself uh, in a point-and-click you know fashion you know talking to different NPCs uh, doing different activities and so forth that's how you unlock the charms and therefore you unlock more of the story and branching paths leading to the uh, true ending 
Now, as far as graphics, this this game has a very interesting art direction. I really enjoyed the way the town of Beacon Pines was presented. Um, it's um, it has this very, I guess, uh, quaint town look with you know different buildings, uh, very. Um, you know, just very calm nature, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, from what it seems, you know, it has a local uh, town hall, local cafes and restaurants, a very charming plaza, colorful, you know, trees and whatnot. But there are some parts of town that are kind of like on the eatery side, you know, especially the the uh, perennial harvesting company, um, you know, where they they're conducting their own. Um, I guess uh, making their own products, you know, that's where the game uh, enters a mystery uh, part. Uh, there's also a forest that looks uh, very creepy as well, um, and and so forth. So there's a lot of variety in terms of the environments and the you know the art direction does a great job of presenting these. And then uh, the other uh, high point in terms of graphics is the actual characters themselves. Um, you know, this game is not for everyone. Uh, uh, you know, it, it features anthropomorphic uh, characters, um, which you know may or may not be for everyone. But I thought they were presented very well. Uh, each main character has their own, um, I guess, uh, figure. You know, when they have dialogue and they have different expressions. So you know, giving the game a lot of variety. So this is pretty cool, and I really enjoy that aspect uh, of the game. Uh, now, in terms of sound, um, the game also, you know, being a narrative-driven game and being a choose-your-own-adventure type of setup, uh, the game is narrated through this female voice. You know, she kind of guides you and explains you, the, you know, the game. And she's narrating the, the key points, you know, uh, before each chapter or after each chapter. Depending, depending on the decisions you make, you have this very... Uh, a very good uh, voiced, uh, um, you know, actress that just narrates the the, the story herself. Uh, now the the dialogue between the characters features kind of like gibberish, kind of uh, uh, similar to the Animal Crossing games. Not sure if, if this was a budgetary decision, uh, being that the game is not developed by or published by a major, you know, publisher. So. Maybe there were some budgetary constraints in terms of having f uh, full uh, voice acting, but nevertheless, the uh, the gibberish that you know it's, it's similar to Animal Crossing. It's pretty well done in the sense that, depending on the emotions and actions of the characters that are being uh, portrayed, uh, they vary in terms of the you know the the pitch and the you know the intensity and the speed and so forth. Uh, so uh, the, the game does a good job of conveying different uh, emotions and uh, uh, you know through through that gibberish um, voice acting, if you will. So yeah, the game uh, in, uh, in terms of sound, you know, again, that does a pretty good job in narrating the story through the voice uh, uh, voice actor or actress. And then finally, the gameplay, as I mentioned, this is mostly a visual novel where you're going to be reading a lot. So again, this game is not for everyone, but the story is very engaging. The game will um, does offer that very interesting choose your own adventure type of decision making, branching paths that will have you come back for more. And the fact that, you know, as I mentioned before, the game is not cookie cutter. It's not very straightforward. The game can be very, again, heartwarming very um, uh, very warm uh, very uh, chill if you will but the game can be also be very eerie and creepy hence why I you know I wanted to talk about this game kind of like for Halloween month because the game does have some uh, uh, you know eerie vibes that are, are perfect for a Halloween game and uh, some of the uh, themes in the game involve you know the, the loss of uh, you know a, a close uh, you know uh, family members such as you know the dad here for for the main character uh, uh, also deals with friendship some of the struggles that you run into um, you know especially for uh, coming uh, coming of age type of situations you know with your with your friends um, different themes such as um, uh, you know some darker themes you know there are some bad endings in the game without spoiling too much that uh, really go uh, to uh, in a very interesting direction again because the game is very deceiving in terms of looks you know you have the it's uh, all these cutesy characters furry characters that you know look very uh, uh, look very cute but uh, there are some uh, very uh, kind of like darker themes in there that uh, give the game a very unique uh, contrast in terms of being uh, you know uh, a friendly game but also kind of like an eerie game at the same time so that's something that I really appreciated uh, about this game 
Uh, the game is not perfect again, but you know it it, it is pretty fun to to play and get the different um, endings, uh, the branching paths, and just explore the different things uh, throughout the game. Uh, the ending was uh, uh, pretty fun. Uh, there are some plot twists here and there that will uh, increase your interest in the game and will keep you focused towards towards the finish line, uh, which is to you know, just find out what happens in Beacon Pines, uh, finding out the mysteries behind the uh, the uh, the company there that settled in town, and the, some of the mysteries surrounding some of the NPCs and uh, um, habitants of, of 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 Beacon Pines. It's definitely a very interesting town with very interesting people living in it and uh, there are some very interesting things that uh, happen and uh, just very different complex personalities across town and a uh, very good storyline with uh, a lot of twists that are in my opinion the strongest points in the game so uh, if I were to recommend this game yeah uh, it's, it's on game pass this is the perfect game pass type of game so uh, make sure you try it out and because uh, you know I had a pretty good time with it it's not the perfect game but uh, definitely a, a, a very solid game pass type of game to explore the story so with that being said thank you guys for watching this video and I will see you all later take it easy